So in this video, I'm going to talk about the retrosynthesis of, of aldol chemistry, okay? And this is a hard part, right? Um, but we're going to make it look easy, okay? And this is a hard part in a test when you're given a, a product and you're asked to make it, okay? So what if you're given this on a test, okay? What if the professor told you, I want you to make this? Make this molecule here, okay? The first thing I look to do is... I, I look to see, okay, well, this looks like it's an, it's an alpha beta unsaturated uh, carbonyl, okay? I'm going to walk through retrosynthesis process first. So if I'm looking at this, I know that we get alkenes from alcohols, okay? So maybe this is coming from my alcohol. There's my ketone, okay, when I'm doing a retrosynthesis, okay? Now, there's two things I want you to keep in mind that will make this chemistry easy, okay? Uh from secondary alcohols we get aldehydes from tertiary alcohols uh, we get ketones okay so if you could remember these two two uh these two these two very important point then this becomes easier to you so if I do the retrosynthesis, well, where's my alpha carbon? My alpha carbon is always adjacent to my carbonyl. So this is my alpha carbon. And we know a better carbon usually contains the alcohol group, okay? So if I split this molecule by the alpha carbon, you can see that this is coming from acetone. Yeah, this is coming from acetone plus, well, remember, what do I see? A secondary alcohol. Remember we said from secondary alcohols, we get aldehydes. So therefore, this has to be coming from ethanol okay so if i take these two molecules and i put in solution sodium ethoxide okay what is going to happen my alpha carbon is going to get protonation which, which which was this we said was our alpha carbon so that's going to get protonation okay so we get protonation plus this will now be my electrophile and so this will attack the carbon and create a negative charge yeah, and I, the mechanism is really not what I want to run through. I'm going to create a negative charge, and then um, these lone pairs will go ahead and attack the oxygen, okay? The the not, the, the hydrogen uh, to form the oxide back in solution. And so if I'm looking at this, well, I have something that looks like this. I have my, 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 my acetone. This carbon is now bonded to a carbon that will now have the alcohol and it has this hydrogen on it. okay it has the, the the hydrogen on it okay so this carbon is bonded to this carbon that has the hydrogen but also have the methyl group i'm sorry <laughs> here's a light wet so i missed my methyl group so there's my methyl group okay okay if i want to redraw the structure it looks something like this here's my methyl group there's my hydrogen. This is now bonded to my carbonyl. Again, and we just lose water. We just lose water un unsaturated. Okay, so if we lose water unsaturated, there's our carbon, there's our alkene, and there's our compound. Okay. So this is how we walk through the retrosynthesis. And again, for this purpose of this video, I'm not gonna go over the, the mechanism again. I'm just gonna go straight to predicting products. Okay. So what if you were asked to make this? Yeah, what if you're asked to make the molecule? Well, again, I see an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl, okay? Where we know that this is my alpha carbon adjacent to the carbonyl, yeah? And if I want to walk through the retrosynthesis, I know, in fact, I get alkenes from um, alcohols, yeah? So I could redraw the structure going through retrosynthesis. We have our alcohol group here, yeah? There's our ketone and there's our, phenol, uh, there's our phenol group here. Yeah. Now look, if we said this is our alpha carbon, the, the, the carbon containing the oxygen is usually our beta carbon. The, 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 the alcohol containing our carbon is usually beta carbon. Okay. Now I want you to look carefully. Okay. If we split this, we know that we could get this on a set of phenol. 
Yeah, we can get this one instead of phenone. Plus, well, look what kind of alcohol we have. We have a tertiary alcohol. Remember what I said? From tertiary alcohols, we get ketones. So that means that we actually take um, these two molecules and react them twice with each other, okay? And the simplified version of doing this is taking the set of phenone with 95 mole percent and add in the base, which is five mole percent in ethanol and sodium methoxide. So it says five mole percent, okay? And what that does is that we generate the original molecule. We generate a carbocation, which is negative charge plus the original molecule. Okay, again, we form our bond and we create the alcohol there. So in that case, we get this. There's my carbon that represents this. Okay, this is now bonded to a carbon that now will have an alcohol on your, on it. There's my R group and there's my, my phenyl group. Okay, now if we lose water, yeah, we, we create, we get the alkene. Yeah, so that's how we would synthesize uh, this product. And again, these these two are the same; they're just drawn a different way, but it's it's it's, it's the same molecule. So that's how we, we go to the synthesis of, of that. So again, it's very important if we should remember the fact that from secondary alcohols we get aldehydes, from tertiary alcohols we get ketones. Then these retrosynthesis becomes uh, uh, super super easy. Okay, so let's look at the next one. Okay, uh, what if we, what if on a test we're given this molecule here? Okay, what if on a test we're given this molecule and they told you to make it? Okay, well, what again, what do you see? I see an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. Okay, and remember alpha carbon is always adjacent to the carbonyl or beta carbon is a little bit down. And in fact, if I run through the retrosynthesis real quick, where do we get, uh, where do we get alkene from? They come from alcohol. Yeah, so this tells me that this was where my alcohol was. Okay, and it just dehydrated. Okay, so if this is my alpha carbon, let's split it. So there's my alpha carbon. Okay, now notice it, it's ring cyclo uh, it's cyclized, which means that everything is, all on together with one chain. So anytime you have a cyclic compound, nothing is separated. Everything is together on one chain. Okay. So if I look at this, well, if I look at this as carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, then on carbon six, well, what type of alcohol do we have? We actually have a tertiary alcohol. So we know that had to be a ketone based on what I said earlier. Okay. So if that is true, then look, we count as carbon one and carbon two, we have the ketone. Yeah. Three, four, five, six. On carbon six, there's my on carbon six, there's my ketone group. Yeah, so this is my ketone and not an aldehyde. Okay. So if you look, this is carbon one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the idea is if I take this molecule and add uh sodium methoxide and ethanol, yeah, I'll deprotonate, so I'll deprotonate, so I'll deprotonate, so um, let's draw, redraw the structure, so I'll deprotonate, yeah, so I'll get my negative charge there, okay, and let's count from where the charge is, let's count from where the charge is to the, to the carbonyl itself that's bonded to, so this is one, two, Three, I will. One, two, three, uh, four. Okay. So, wait, this is, wait, let us see. We, 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 I put my alpha carbon in the wrong place. So, uh, I see what I did wrong here. Remember, uh, this was my alpha carbon. Yeah. So, this is my alpha carbon, just like we did here when we split it. So, this is my alpha carbon. So, that was my mistake. So, once I add, Five more percent, I was like, that's wrong. Once I add my five more percent, 
Okay. Yeah. I'll generate my negative charge here. Just like this was my alpha carbon. So we got to be very careful. You know, remember we said this was carbon one. This was carbon one. Okay. So this is carbon one and my alpha carbon was on carbon one. Okay. So let's, let's ring cyclize. So let's count. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we know we're going to form a six membered ring with an alcohol and a methyl group on carbon six. Okay. So if I'm looking at this, we form a six membered ring. Okay. And carbon two, let's count. This is carbon one, two, three, four, five, six. In carbon six, we have this methyl group here. We have now we what become an alcohol and carbon two, we have the ketone group. Okay. And again, if we lose water, if you lose water, then it becomes unsaturated. Yeah. And we get the desired product. So again, nothing difficult, nothing difficult. If you could remember the fact that, okay, well, from secondary alcohols, we get aldehydes from tertiary alcohol, we get ketones and these becomes very easy. Okay. So what if you're asked to make this? Okay, what if you're and guys use this use this video as a practice. Okay, so once I write the structure down, pause the video and do the the do the the, 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 the synthesis yourself, the retro synthesis, and then the synthesis forward and see if we, we both come to the same answer. Okay. So what if on the test you're given to make this molecule? Yeah. What if on a test you were asked to make this molecule? How would you make it? Well, to me, I see a alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. Okay. And if that is true, let's walk through retrosynthesis. Well, I know from an alkene, I have an alcohol. So if I look at this, um, there's my alcohol. Yeah. Because there's my alpha carbon. Yeah. And there's my alpha carbon. The beta, we know the beta carbon is right adjacent to it. Yeah, and we know the beta carbon always contains the alcohol. There's your alpha carbon. Okay, well, that's nice to know. Okay, so the structure looks something like this, yeah? Now, again, because it's in a cyclic ring, we know that everything is all together on one chain. So if that is true, if I break the bond between my alpha carbon, let's count. We have carbon one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so on carbon five, well, what type of alcohol do we have? We have a secondary alcohol, yeah, with one hydrogen. Yeah, we have a secondary alcohol with one hydrogen, so that means that it has that had to be an aldehyde on the carbon five. So therefore, I'm looking at this. This is one on carbon two. We have the ketone. Three, four, five. There's my aldehyde. Okay. Now, oh, I forgot my methyl groups here. <laughs> carbon four. So let's count. This is carbon one, two, three, four. So on four, we have these two methyl groups here. And the molecule has to be this. So the idea is if I take this and add sodium ethoxide, yeah, in ethanol, I'll generate my alpha carbon, which is on carbon one. Okay, so this will get deeper. I'll have my negative charge on carbon one. Okay. Yeah, and now it was a ring cyclized, so let's count our carbons. So this is one, two three, four, five. So we form a five membered ring. Okay. We form a five membered ring. Okay. So let's see. Maybe this will call this carbon two. Where's our five membered ring? So this is carbon two. Well, maybe this is carbon one, two, three, four, five. Well, on carbon four, we have two methyl group. Well, that's nice to know. On carbon five, we have the aldehyde. But remember, when we attack, we actually create an alcohol. Yeah. There's our alcohol and there's a hydrogen from the aldehyde. Okay. So this is the compound that we form. And again, if we lose water, if we lose water, I'm running out of space here, but if we lose water, we get to the structure, the observed structure. Yeah. So we still have this over here. We have our ketone and now we have the double bond here. So again, you could see the, the general, the, the general pattern. If you could remember that from secondary alcohols, we get aldehydes and from uh, tertiary alcohols, we get ketones, then these retrosynthesis and making these molecules become fairly easy.